Ah, now we've made it to Animal Kingdom. After we experienced a couple firsts of our own at Epcot. Yeah. He, he rode Spaceship Earth for the first time. Yep. And I rode it for I don't know how many times, but for the first time I rode it with a narration in a different language. I've always heard either the Jeremy Irons English or the Judy Dench English. But today we switched it up. Yes. Have had the uh dieses uh Dieses was was es ist, hat er zum ersten Mal es auf Deutsch gehört. So yeah, I listened to it in Dutch for the first time. German. Yeah, what a German, German. To continue with the flow we had going from the Germany Pavilion. So I got a new experience on Spaceship Earth on my 13th trip to Walt Disney World. So we're about to check in here, go through the magic band scan, and hit Dinosaur for a fast pass. About to venture into Dino Land USA, catch a quick ride with a fast pass on Dinosaur. Once we get in there and get that out of the way, we'll go over and hit Expedition Everest. Um, I mean, once we do that, we'll be moving on to some brand new experiences. Like I said, Everest is brand new to me, never been on it. Try to hit it in the evening so we can get a beautiful view of the park, see some of the nighttime surroundings. But that's what's great about coming to Walt Disney World. This is my 13th trip here. 13th trip. And I'm still experiencing new things. Still experiencing new things. Today I got to ride Tower of Terror for my second time. First time during the day. So still experiencing new things. Um, and like I said, got to see Spaceship Earth in German. Brand new experience. Not often you, you get to do that. And now I'm hitting Dino Land USA, which I've been plenty of times before, and I actually appreciate it and love it. A lot of Disney fans don't have a good taste in it, don't enjoy it as much, but I, I like it personally. But now we're off, we're gonna hit Dinosaur, get chased around by some Carnotaurus, Carnotauri, I don't, that's not it, that's... I think, it, I think that's right, Carnotauri. Carnotauri. I, I don't know, I don't know. Either way, they're gonna chase us and try to eat our faces and our beards. And that's probably it. Like, that's all I would eat if I was a carnivore. I mean, I eat a lot of food. As long as it cooks it first, because, you know, uncooked face, raw face is just gross. That's a reference. So, okay. I doubt, it. yeah, I doubt the folks at home got it, like always. He got it. I got it. I got it. It was kind of morbid. Kind of lowbrow humor. Or highbrow. If you hear it and get disgusted, you're going to raise your brow. So, it's kind of both. It's both brow. It's like a unibrow, essentially. And yeah, so here we go. We're entering um, the Chester and Hester section of Dinoland USA, which, like I said, most fans don't appreciate it, think it's cheap, think it's cheesy, which it is. I won't dispute that fact, but I enjoy it, the story of it, and the theming of it. But I'll, I'll enjoy anything dinosaurs. I'm just a sucker for dinosaurs. Like being a sucker for pain, like the 21 Pilots song. I mean, that's not 21 Pilots. Who is that? That's. Lost me. Sucker for Pain. It was in uh, Suicide Squad. That song. I'm not a sucker for pain, but I'm a sucker for dinosaurs. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. I feel like he's got a bone to pick with you, Jimmy. Ha! Wow, that was a rare ha out of one of my puns. That's why I appreciate Ellen's Energy Adventure. It has dinosaurs, it has Bill Nye, it has puns. What more do you want? Less Bill Nye. Let what? This man just said less Bill Nye. I would have been okay if you said less puns. And I enjoy a good pun, mind you. So there's the Primeval World section, the Chester and Hester's Dino-Rama section. And this just ties into the story of it, because now we're over at their original Dino Institute that was founded alongside their roadside attraction. That's the story of it all. I mean, it's not real. But... Yeah, I enjoy the story of it all. But most people don't appreciate it. They don't stop and look at details. But it's okay. This right here used to be a McDonald's at one time. Right here. And there's still small remnants left of the, McDon of the McDonald's in the park. Not in this restaurant, mind you. But inside Dinosaur. Most people know about it. At least I assume so. I know about it. Some of the pipes in the queue for Dinosaur are red, yellow, and white. And they have the chemical formula on them for tomato, not tomato, for ketchup, mayonnaise, and mustard. They're in there in the queue. I'm going to go look at them. Don't know if I'll get them on film, but they're there. 
I don't think Jimmy knew that. Huh? He, he wasn't listening. I'll tell him in the queue, I'm sure. And he'll be annoyed, and he might slap me in the face. Probably will. And then feed my face to the Carnotaurus. Also probably will. Yeah. And then Chris escape. Smack it off. Yeah, and then escape and use me as sacrifice. I have to be made. Yeah. Look at that, though. There's a... That's, that's a Tyrannosaurus, not a Carnotaurus. They're of the meat-eating variety, though. They're still uh, carnivores, carnivorous creatures, of course. And there's Aladar from the movie that many people forget about. Which is a real shame, it was a good movie. Exactly, good movie. Aladar, the Iguanodon. And actually, you see the meteor right there in the middle of that sign? That was the original meteor that came at you at the end of the ride, which has now been replaced with the head of a Carnotaurus. So it all makes sense, but it, it was replaced and now it's still in the ride, just in a different capacity, outside the ride, right here. Right here. So we're about to hit up the Fast Pass entrance, get a quick ride on Dinosaur. So, I just did Exp Expedition Everest for the first time. He did it for the second time? Second it? time. Second time. I mean, it's been around for long enough for everyone to know about it, but I haven't been to this park itself in 12 years. So last time I was here, it w didn't even exist. There was no mountain, didn't exist. And same with Pandora, which we're walking into right now, didn't exist. The movie wasn't even out then. Yeah, yeah. So then, I mean, I obviously have seen ride-throughs of Expedition Everest and talked to people about the ride who has been on it. So I knew what happens, but didn't know what to expect. And it was, it was more than I expected. I enjoyed it. I love it. It's a good ride. But now we're experiencing Pandora for the first time. Yeah. Like I said, these mountains and Expedition Everest weren't even built last time I was here. So the landscape was all trees, as far as the eye can see. But now it's dominated by floating mountains. In Jim, Jim, Jimmy, in the Valley of Mora. I don't know how to say that. So we're gonna investigate it. Check it out. It's barely daylight out, so we're gonna see a little bit in the daylight. Then we're gonna mosey around at night. I have heard and seen videos stating that nighttime is better than daytime in Pandora. But we definitely have to get on flight of passage, no matter what. I was just told by a cast member that he waited six hours for it and it was worth every single minute. So I'm not gonna be waiting six because that's not even a thing right now. It's only at two-ish, but I will wait as long as I need to. Let's just go check out some of the mountains real quick. We got a little time. We'll check out some mountains. Check out these floating mountains. And like I said, they just dominate the landscape. Coming up by, by bus, that's all you could see was these mountains and Everest. Before, not so much. You could not tell Animal Kingdom from forest until now. Look at that. Look at that. This is everything they've said, I've heard, and more. The waterfall action. Uh, I'm trying to see, I don't want to spoil too much of the magic, but I know where there are some fake waterfalls. And I know obviously that's a real waterfall, these are real, obviously. But, somewhere deeper in the valley, I don't think we can see it from this angle. There are actually fake waterfalls back there. Hard to see from this angle, we'll have to find them, but... We'll mill about, see what we can see. Check out the foliage, the plant life. And even animal life. They have uh, Pandoran life. Let's go check it out.
under the floating mountains right now. Ones, 15 and 16, is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Seal genetic matching room. Okay, Dr. Steven, oh, they're ready. Can everyone see me? Hello. Great. Flight of passage. Welcome to the Avatar program. Soon, you're going to have a chance to undertake an amazing Navi rite of passage, flying on the back of this powerful animal called an Ikron, or as we call it, a Banshee. The way you're going to do this is by being matched to something called an Avatar. And I'm here to help you guys get ready. But first, we have to scan you for Pandoran microparasites. Okay, um, first, we need to find the compatible match of your genetic material with the genetic material of one of the avatar bodies that we already have. Once we do that, you'll be able to link to that avatar and uh, fly. Help us out and move around a bit. Yes, got him. Now, let's find you your avatar matches. Hey, what about me? I got a match. Yes, what about me? I got a match. Yes. I got one too. Yeah, he doesn't have one yet. Oh, he's got one. All right. You've all been matched with avatar. Well, we made it back to All-Star Sports after a very tiring day. Hitting the three parks, hitting Hollywood Studios, Epcot, and then Animal Kingdom. Got to ride both the Navi River Journey and the Flight of Passage. Highly recommend both. I won't get too in-depth on them, but I was a little, slightly, slightly underwhelmed with Flight of Passage. Still enjoyed it.
Still enjoyed it, but slightly underwhelmed. And I was actually more impressed with Navi River Journey than I expected. That's all I'll say for now, but headed back to the room, gonna catch some Z's. We got an appointment for Magic Kingdom all day tomorrow. So, excited for that. Till then though, I guess we will catch some Z's like I said, and see you all a little later.